about Saudi oil production. Over the summer, did the U.S. strike a deal with Saudi Arabia to boost oil production? Look, there was, uh, and we, we talked about it before the trip, um, that, uh, uh, that energy security was going to be something the President talked about when we went, that we were having conversations uh, with Saudi Arabia before the trip about better balancing supply and demand. Um, and, uh, and obviously, when you heard the President himself uh, in, in Jeddah after the bilateral conversation that we had, that, uh, that he was hopeful that there would be uh, a boost in production. There was a boost in production afterward. Um, what I would tell you is, and I, I've seen the press reporting on this, there were discussions before the trip, obviously, uh, about a better balance of supply and demand to stabilize the, the energy market. Of course there was, and we talked about that openly. Um, but this recent decision by OPEC Plus to now cut uh, the, these uh, two million barrels certainly is in not, in, and Kareen said this a gazillion times, it's not in keeping uh, with, uh, with what we believe was the actual mathematical analysis of what needed to be done for supply and demand at a time when supply is the predominant challenge. We didn't believe it was in keeping with that, and it certainly wasn't in, in, in keeping with the conversations that, uh, that we were having. But did those conversations ever culminate in a concrete deal with Saudi Arabia? Did Saudi Arabia ever agree that they would boost oil production? What I, again, I'm going to go back to what I said before. We, there were conversations before the trip, as you might imagine there would be, uh, about, uh, about um, an architecture that could better balance supply and demand to include what was what ended up as a, a, an increase in production at the end of the trip. I think I'm just going to leave it there. And then just a quick follow-up then on OPEC's decision, because the President said there could be consequences. Do you have any update on what those might be? No. I, the, the President's national security team is um, taking a look at that right now, um, in, internal here to, to the National Security Council, the, looking at, uh, at options. Um, uh, looking at this bilateral relationship with Saudi Arabia and, and what uh, what options we would like to tee up to the president for him to consider going forward. Uh, but the president also said he wants to talk to members of Congress, and obviously the members of Congress are, are, are not, not here in town. So we're not in a hurry. We're not in a hurry. And we don't need to be in a hurry. Uh, but clearly the president believes that we need to make sure this bilateral relationship, quite frankly, like every bilateral relationship we have with friends, partners, and allies, is, is suited to the national interests of the United States of America and to the, and to the security interests of the American people. And that's what he's going to stay focused on. But no, I don't have a specific update for you. Staying on that topic, uh, the Saudi energy minister said yesterday that when it comes to this conversation, uh, his country is taking a mature route. You said that at the conference known as Davos on the desert, on the global stage, yeah, one of the world's leading financiers. You saw it. So what do you make of the implication, then, that the U.S. is acting immature? I, I obviously refute that, of course. Uh, th this isn't a, you know, look, this isn't, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not like some high school romance here. We're talking about a significant, important bilateral relationship, a partnership that has survived over 80 years, an important partnership, a strategic partnership. We said that even before the trip. Um, and uh, I don't think talking about it in, in terms like that necessarily lends the gravity of how important this relationship is uh, to, uh, to the way that we're considering it. Um, the decision was, uh, was regretful. Uh, it was, as the President said, a mistake to make that cut. It was certainly not in keeping with our analysis of what needed to be uh, done to help better balance supply and demand on the market. Uh, now, look, it, uh, we have not seen uh, the decision itself result in an increase in oil prices. In fact, uh, oil prices continue to come down. They're down like 30 percent right now from June. And of course, prices at the pump here in the United States are down about a buck 20 since about that same time frame. So we haven't seen a, a radical effect here on uh, uh, on prices, but that doesn't mean that that uh, that uh, that we're all of a sudden happy about uh, the decision at a time, as I mentioned before, when supply on the market is the predominant challenge. We felt that this was short-sighted, um, and again, we're gonna we're gonna obviously t take a look at the relationship going forward, um, and I can assure you that whatever this relationship looks like at the end of that process, it's gonna be uh, the, the where how we get there is gonna be done in a very deliberate, measured way. Um, keeping in mind uh, 
our national security interest and those of the American people, uh, the American troops and the American citizens that live over there, 70,000 of them in Saudi Arabia, as well as the strategic partnership that we have had for eight decades with Saudi Arabia. All that will be factored in. If I can ask 